So good morning, everyone. So um, for my report, we're discussing Chapter 20, which is the e-healthcare service design using model-based jobs theory. So basically, um, here on this uh, discussion, we're going to touch base again with, if you can remember, um, our first um, class with GP as well, um, it's regarding Christensen. So we know that Christensen from Harvard has been um, giving us a lot of thoughts and theories that really help us, um, that really disrupt the, the technology right now. So here um, we're discussing Christensen. He proposed the jobs theory, um, which will effectively design and help um, any innovation. Okay. So of course, digital transformation. So we're saying that digital transformation is a journey of creating incremental value by developing or by deploying technology choice fully and sustainably into the business operations of the organization. So it becomes part of the new normal. So um, I've highlighted some of the words, key points here for you to better understand what digital transformation is. So it is a journey. So it is not actually an end state there will we know that change is inevitable so there's always there will always be new technology so we cannot say that once you have implemented one technology it's done we know that we need to do discover more we need to maintain we need to add in new new things on that technology so let's say next is the incremental value okay um, incremental value, we cannot actually say that a value is only focused on, um, on a specific, um, let's say, when we say value, we always think of money. But value is perceived to be always vague, and also it depends on how one sees it. So here, um, I would say that it is profits. So it can also, the value would also, the technology, value of technology would also be in creating convenience, saving time, which in turn can be spent on doing something else that is more value adding um, to the task. Next is technology choice fully. So here we're saying that technology is the most appropriate to the organization. That's why um, on the previous chapters and things that we also learned through the course, um, we made use of knowing how to acquire, how to develop um, certain business information system. There was a lot of things that we need to do before we are able to implement a specific technology in the organization. So we need to know if this technology that will be implemented is the most appropriate and the right choice for the organization, for them to be able to, of course, have incremental value in the future. Sustainable, sustainably, meaning, um, of course, we need to do maintenance of the technology, which is really important until, um, we need to maintain the technology until a significant time or a period wherein a value is really created or achieved. Of course, the technology that we implement always has a goal. Um, it's not simply because we just need something new, but there is a goal that each organization is trying to achieve. <clears throat> so there are actually no shortcuts. So everything, that's why we learned also about the um, system lifecycle, right? So we need to go through the review, the implementation, the maintenance part of the technology. And lastly, business operations. So this one would just discuss on seamless end-to-end -end implementation of the technology until it becomes to be part of a new normal, until everyone is able to adapt to the technology that's being implemented. Um, digital transformation is the most complex phase of digitalization. And also because it changes the economic structures, um, it would always have a pot potential to change markets. 
um, they create new technology applications and further advance each products and services. So there's always an um, improvement on each products and whatever services that this specific te technology would be given. Okay, so here is the part we're in digital transformation of services. So more on focus on the chapter itself. So here, um, job, jobs theory um, of Christensen is basically focused on the term hire. So he's saying that um, you hire a certain product to do the job for you. So basically, when I actually uh, tried to search what really Christensen discussed on this one, he had an example um, using McDonald's, wherein their use case was um, trying to be able to sell or improve uh, milkshakes. So what they did is the, the common uh, thing that we would do if we want to know um, what our customers would want is we try to create a poll, just like what JP um, um, did for us. They, uh, usually you create a poll, ask a specific, specific client, what do you want for, for let's say, for example, here um, in Kristen said, he said, what do you want in McDonald's? But, um, He's saying that um, um, a specific job is a shorthand for what the customer really wants to accomplish in a given time. So it's not basically saying directly because most of the time customers really doesn't know what they really want. Um, they There is no perfect answer that I want this one there because there are different kinds of customers, right? So here, he, he focused on knowing what the customer really needs, okay? So um, in the review or the poll that uh, Kristen Sen mentioned that um, focusing on what he did again with McDonald's is they're finding out why most of the clients were actually buying milkshake at 6 a.m. in the morning rather than buying donuts or coffee. So basically here the discussion was they found out that this specific clients more of buy um, the milkshake or hire this milkshake to do the job of keeping them awake while, while they do a long drive going to work, Keep, keeping them um, the perfect boost before they go for, um, for their work rather than having a coffee that would be difficult to, for them to actually drink because it's hot. So it's it's um, like quite a challenge for those long drivers going to work. And also the donut that they're saying that it's difficult for them to eat while driving. So because milkshake is easier for them, it takes time for it to for them to finish it. They use a specific straw just a straw to be able to drink it. And it would be, of course, easier to, to drink rather than having the coffee. So just that's just the background of the job theory. Okay, so here we're going to discuss the elements of the job theory. So as I have mentioned, consumers hire, <clears throat> consumers hire a product to do the job, um, the jobs to be done for them. So here it's the process that derives progress which consumers try to accomplish um he also focused that hired has two um specific um uh what, what do you call this there are two specific types of hire where in first is the big hire wherein you call the purchasing of the product so when you buy the product and then little higher when you keep on or the consumer keeps on using the product so repetitively. So here they can clearly state that you use the products to, to resolve your issues or your jobs. So what you see here is the elements of jobs theory. Um, let me check my notes. 
Okay. So he also mentioned, because Christensen mentioned and pointed out the importance of emotional and social aspects aside from functional aspects that you have on a specific job. So aspects are the qualities which derive better solutions or are inevitable elements of the specific job. So here what you can see on this um, table is what are the elements that um, Christensen was saying on the job theory. Okay, first is the customer. His explanation was who requires to resolve the problems. So going back to, to my example, let's say us, we are the customer. Um, we, we need to have the solution for our specific issues, right? Uh, which is the, for example, for the milkshake, the issue of keeping someone awake while driving to work. Let's say one, two hours, especially in, let's say in the Philippines, one, two hours going to work. So I'm the customer. I require you to, um, to solve my problem of um, being awake all the time, going through work. And then the job is the process that derives progress, which consumers try to accomplish. The progress would be what customers achieve by the jobs. Higher is the use of products by customers to solve jobs. Situation, uh, specific context wherein the jobs actually occur. Aspect is the qualities which derive better solution and the solution means is the means to achieve the specific job. So um, here there's a use case of um, e-health service design. Um, these are the approaches that were focused on the chapter itself. So as we all know, um, the, the, the book was actually created or written during the time when the COVID actually started. So back in 2020, I think. Um, so we know that e e electronic health is expected to realize the wellness of having personal care using the information communication technology or basically technology um, just to improve healthcare services. So what the chapter said was um, they needed to design a business model to be able to have a good um, e-health service. So here they introduced several approaches. One is the cloud-based image archive service. So this is just the radiology information system which they focus on PACS, which is Picture Archiving and Communication System. So PACS is actually, um, um, it's a medical imaging technology, which provides um, a way of storing um, um, pictures of our X-ray films in a convenient uh, way wherein doctors or other stakeholders would be easier to, to access the images. Um, so these are electronic images and reports that can be transmitted using the system. So here, um, the, the images actually having it stored in one system um, eliminates the need to actually manually file, manually retrieve, or and transport those big film um, jacket. You you know the film that we have in when, whenever we have X-ray, right? It's the big black one that film that we need to carry around and show, show our doctors. So here, the system is able to store those digital films or electronic images in a specific folder that can be ac accessible by the doctors. So they're saying it, it has a universal format um, wherein you can transfer um, those digital imaging in a specific um, communication or in their system itself. So um, they have also implemented some security or they're they aware of risk that we're in, especially now that we're focusing on PDP as well. So um, there was specific um, reviews on this specific um, system, wherein they know that this reduces the physical and time, uh, physical barriers and time 
associated in traditional um, bringing of film-based image, um, especially with distribution and display. Now it's as easy as having those, for example, those computers or screens in front of you rather than putting that picture up in the um, the uh, light, right? To be able to see um, what are what's in those films, and it would be it's easier now for the doctors as well to really pinpoint the issue that you have on your um, X-ray films. Next, that was in introduced and discussed is the concept of operation. Here, they also have the personally controlled electronic health record system. So this um, PCEH our system is actually what they have in Australia. So this is an Australian government agenda to really improve the healthcare system of their um, country. So here, um, they're saying that the system enables them to secure the sharing of health information um, between individuals um, healthcare provider. So, as you can see on the diagram itself, um, on your PCHR, they have um, put in specific access controls so that the customer itself would be able to, um, to control who would be able to access uh, those, their information, healthcare information. Remember that um, your healthcare informations are always um, should also be covered by security, right? Um, BDPA, um, um, information security. So here, it, they can easily share it with, um, with their doctors, um, easy, easily accessible also for, for them and whenever they do checkups and all. So, So here they're saying that the value of the system is they have easy um, health information access, so it becomes more efficient. They have they ensure safer healthcare, um, deliver effective healthcare because it's easier access information, which provide opportunities um, for faster diagnosis and improved prevention. So let's, they're saying that once you're able to um, identify um, what issues that you have on your health, there will easier, earlier intervention and treatment um, would also be improved. And they also had, next is they also, for the approach is they discussed business model canvas or what we call the BMC and um, using goals and in the other indicators for activity-based process integration in healthcare. Okay, so here on the, the chapter, they focus on also on enterprise architecture. They're using Archimate. So Ar Archimate is an open and independent enterprise architecture modeling language, which supports the description, analysis, and visualization of architecture within and across business domains in any um, ambiguous way. So here you, you can see the, the healthcare modeling through enterprise architecture in a hospital case. So um, here you can see the hospital strategic administration. Um, they have the IT leader, the clinical admin leader, and the hospital chair involved as well. Um, so these folks um, really reviewed um, and would be able to use, using the Archimate, they would um, be able to um, analyze the healthcare processes, the functions, and their system. So, and um, cross-domain meaning um, different um, access for those clinical or those different doctors that you have. For example, um, of course, let's say if you have a heart issue, Usually, um, currently, for I, I, for myself, I have senior, my parents are already senior. So it's not only limited to having always health check for your heart. You would also have um, 
um, need to go to doctors for your blood sugar and urologies, right? So using um, the specific system, you would be able to share um, the information, your health information um, to those specific doctors that are interconnected. Okay. Okay. So, focusing on the healthcare domain, they're saying that BPMN um, here because um, the the jobs there you that they were uh, mentioning, they were trying to find out which a uh, specific business model was the most appropriate. But here, let's they're saying that using BPMN. BPMN is Business Process Modeling Language. It is impossible to describe an application and technology components. And it's impossible to describe the interrelationships among business processes, application components, and technology devices. So on the next um, slides, you would see the comparison that, I, that was discussed on the chapter. And also they're saying that the automatic evolution operations did not focus on business model evolution of the healthcare domain. So in short, the key elements of the business models were not clearly stated when, if you're using the BPMN and the automatic evolution operations. Okay, so going back to um, the model-based job theory. So this is just the, I, I've taken this um, the this models already directly from the book. Um, here, um, as you can see, okay. So here are the actual elements that I have discussed earlier. So your customer would be the medical service provider. The jobs that needs to be um, addressed: medical jobs using medical images. So as I, this one is discussing on the past. So the extra imaging. Um, the service that needs to be rendered would be um, medical image remote collaboration service. So being able to easily access those uh, specific imaging. And the service provider is the, of course, the image collaboration service provider. So the radiologist. So here, um, medical image technology is hard to use. It's actually the problematic situation um, that is being identified. Um, <clears throat> they're saying that medical image technology or the tool that you're using is actually difficult to use. Cause is because there is no easy means to use a medical image technology. Um, Next is um, the progress here is to realize what is your progress that you want is to realize open use of medical image information, um, meaning um, you should be able to use or it's very accessible for, for those medical practitioners to be able to access or use the image information. And your solution is identified as medical image collaboration service to share and diagnose medical image remotely. So this is quite important solution right now, especially that most of us um, are scared to go actually to hospitals to have our checkups and even go to clinics, small clinics to actually have digital imaging. So here um, it's, a, it's an advantage um, implementing PACS because once you have your x-ray, you can remotely discuss it with your um, healthcare provider or your doctor, what needs to be done if it's, uh, so it's it's done in a very convenient um, way, convenient use of medical image information. Okay, here the comparison again was um, used against um, ASOMG. Um, which is what we call the actor service object means goal. Um, here, um, I have the chart again here. 
um, comparing two packs as well. So um, the model-based jobs theory is compared with the actor service object means approach. So um, they're saying that um, this one consists of five key business model elements. So basically the business actor, business service, the business objects, business um, means, and of course your business goal. So of course they're saying that um, your business actor will always be the patient or the medical service provider provider or the platform provider. <clears throat> um, the service required as for example is the x-ray image capturing, the retrieval and the diagnosis, and of course the platform service. Your, your object or your product would be the x-ray image. Your means or ways to achieve the specific um, job is having an x-ray camera, um, the image retrieval software, and the image server wherein you would store actually those specific um, image and the image diagnosis. And um, basically your goal, your end goal for business goal would be low overload security, should be efficient, always available, secure, nobody else can access this aside from the um, real um, stakeholders, the doctors, and of course the patient or the service provider. And um, rapid response availability, like focus on the platform provider. It, it, they should be able to easily retrieve um, those specific images as required. So um, this is just the job theory enterprise uh, um, architecture comparison, um, similar to what I have discussed earlier. Um, this is how they map um, uh, in the ASOMG model for four packs. So um, like going back to this slide, um, your end goal, would always be um, low cost, security, should be efficient, should be re re reliable and available. So here your patients, these are their end goals. Um, <clears throat> your security or your X-ray image capture using your X-ray camera and your software. And of course being used by the <clears throat> actor as the service provider. Okay, I, I think this one, um, um is would be easier to understand when you really um know how to 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 when you know or using the table that i have discussed earlier okay so e-healthcare service design um, um I, I i just this is the end of the chapter itself so um i'm just trying to to show it here on how we do the COVID response. Okay, so here in Singapore, um, currently uh, we have maintained low, um, the healthcare was able to maintain uh, low impact for COVID. Let's say that we do have a lot of cases. However, um, it is really managed well by the, by the government. So um, they're just using the jobs theory and the ASOMG uh, concept. Um, if you guys um, would could help me here, if this would be correct um, service design. So our my customer, I I put COVID patient. So um, COVID patient would be um, those uh, infected or. Uh, let's say PUI, what they call person? Person under investigation. Yeah, yeah, that one. PUI, person under investigation. So those who are um, perceived to be inve infected or came close to a specific COVID patient. Okay. So your concern is 
convenient and easy way to have um, a checkup, know if you are really infected, and of course, having a testing. So compared to Philippines, here, the government goal was to really know if, if anyone is infected. So they have distributed um, testing kits for each household. So we were given six testing kits for each household, meaning you don't need, if you think you're a PUI, um, you can isolate at home, use your test kits, and then just report through a system if you are infected. And then the government would actually call you on, on the next steps or the healthcare um, would call you on the next steps. Your problematic situation. Um, I'm saying that test kits are limited um, and <clears throat> we are aware of the culture, especially in the Philippines. There is a always COVID patient shaming. Um, that's the situation. That's why um, I think some of the COVID infected person usually doesn't go out and say um, they're infected. Um, I've heard or seen in news also in the Philippines that they try to barricade a specific house if they realize or the neighbors actually find out that there is someone who has COVID there. So basically the COVID scare. Cost analysis is why is this happening? Of course, there's always lack of testing kits, um, lack of testing centers, and of course, your healthcare provider. Uh, we know that um, there's very limited people who are able to do the testing or uh, actually help in this situation. So what is the solution? So what product would you hire or solution, hire the solution? So um, first is provide more clinics uh, for COVID tests, um, doing the checkup, or what is famous now is the teleconsult. So everything can be done using Zoom, um, FaceTime, and um, mobile console. And of course, purchase trusted test kits that are really um, give accurate results. The jobs, um, test kit procurement, and um, more mobile healthcare workers. And then the product would be test kit, teleconsult, mobile application. So um, just sharing how, how Singapore was able to, to quickly implement this, this e-healthcare um, service in, here in Singapore. So first is they, they created applications um, wherein you can just enter um, your results, send photo, similar to PAX, you can just send photo of the test that you have taken. And then um, there are, the application would also say if you need to go to the specific healthcare provider, they have identified specific testing centers that would be actually near your house. Um, if there's a need, and and also um, if you there is a requirement to do a quarantine, um, government would also support, uh, like picking up the specific patient to do the the check checkup to prevent actually spreading the virus itself. Um, so. Um, Here, using the service design um, for e-healthcare would be a great advantage, especially how we implement it now, uh, which is we really need to have a good healthcare system and be provided um, a good information system to, to take care of the healthcare industry. Um, Especially, we, we didn't know before we were used to going to face-to-face -face with the doctors to do our checkups and conduct our checkups. Now, using this, um, hopefully, those um, jobs-based theory, more countries or more folks would be able to implement or create some system that would really be an advantage specifically for the, for the government as well as the healthcare industry. 